Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to introduce you to the MIT App Inventor. We will start from scratch by learning to build simple apps and as we progress slowly, I will introduce you to various other options of this MIT App Inventor. So without any delay, let's start learning. Alright. So first, let us go to the website. Go to google.com and search for MIT Inventor. Okay. And in the search result, you have to go to the first result. Okay. And when this page loads up, all you have to do is click on create apps. When you click on create apps, it will ask you to sign in to the Gmail account. Okay. So I'm going to do that now. All right. Next. And it logs in to the MIT Inventor website. Okay. Now, when you start for the first time, when you sign in for the first time, you have to accept the terms of service. So click on accept and then it proceeds to the next screen. So here click continue and here close this. Okay, close this. Now this is the screen you will be presented when you log into MIT Inventor app. Alright. So if you create a project or if you create many projects, it will be listed out here. But as this is new, there are no projects here. Alright. So I am going to explain about all these things when it matters. Now, right now I am not going to explain everything and confuse you. So let us create our first app. Okay. So click on create new project and here you have to give a name to the app that you are building. Alright. So I am going to say a random number generator. Okay, random number generator and when I click on OK, a new file will be created and I will be taken to this screen. Alright, now here this is the screen, this is the screen. Alright, on the left side, on the left side, you have all the options that you can use to create a user interface. Okay, we have a button checkbox, date picker and so on. And in the layout tab, we have many layouts. I will explain this when it matters. In media, we can add sounds, images, text to speech, etc. And then we have drawing and animation where we can create apps like paint okay, or any games. And in maps, if you want to uh, use the feature of maps in the app, you can do that. Similarly, there are many. You can go ahead that you can explore. Okay. Once again, I'm not going to explain everything right now and confuse you. Now we can program for three sizes. One is phone size, which is this, whatever is visible here. Next is tablet size, which is this size of a tablet. And next is monitor size, which is this. Okay. Which is this. I'll be coding for phone size. And the thing is, if you code for any size, you can change it to other sizes by just selecting the tablet size. Alright. So do not worry much about this. Now, there are two sections for this, two main sections for this. Alright. One is designer section in which we are currently in right now. One is blocks section. Okay. In the designer section, in the designer section, we will be deciding how the app looks on a phone okay in the designer section we will be designing or deciding how the app looks when you use it okay how the app looks to the user whereas in the blocks section we will be using blocks of codes to decide what functionality does the buttons 
or any labels or any images on the designer screen does okay that is in block section now as you are new to the software it may sound confusing but do not worry about this right now because when we start coding our first app i'll explain the process in detail okay so that is all that you need to know right now all right so let's move to the next section and create a simple app to generate a random number all right let me quickly show you the app that we'll be creating all right so i've used an emulator here i'll be talking about this later now this is how your app looks like okay so we'll start with very basic app now here you cannot see anything here you have a button called as generate and when i click on generate button it generates a random number okay so 33 random once again if i click on it it generates 57 once again if i click on it 100 once again if i click on it 48 and as you go on clicking it generates random numbers all right so this is what we will be creating now all right i am on the same page here so let us create the random number generator app all right so as you saw in the app we have a button so button is available here all you need to do is click drag and drop it here okay and then we need a place to generate the random numbers or we need something to display the random numbers and for that we need label okay so i'll click drag and drop label onto this screen okay now this is how my screen will look like but if you had noticed the button was at the center and also the random number generator was at the center of the screen to bring it to the center we must make use of this okay now this is screen 1 screen 1 whatever you are seeing and i have label and button on the screen okay label and button on the screen now button let me change the button button has text on button on it but what do i want i want generate on it so when you click on button its properties get displayed here okay when you click on button its properties get displayed here so in the text i do not want text for button i want generate okay i want generate when i click outside you can see generate has come here generate i want to change the font size let me make it 25 25 so this is okay and label i do not want uh, it to display anything so i will delete text for label 1 initially i do not want it to display anything so when i click here you can see nothing is being displayed all right but when the random numbers get displayed i want it to be in the size 50 okay so i'll change the font size to 50 now this is done but now we have to bring this to center and for that we have to click on screen align horizontal center align vertical center okay now this has come to the center now we have created the interface or this is how it will look to the user who uses the app now we have to work on the functionality we have to write the codes to do what we want when we click on generate button okay to do that we have to go for blocks okay so i have clicked on blocks so here you can see screen 1 has label 1 and button 1 all right these two are the things that i have added to the screen correct so it has taken from there 
these are built in to the uh, website i can say these are built in options and we have to make use of these to give functionality to button and label all right now when i click on button all the options related to button get displayed here okay you can scroll down and you can see and when i click on label all the options related to label get displayed here okay now what should happen what must we do we have to click on generate button correct and when we click on generate button the label has to display random numbers right so that is what we have to write code to now i'll go to button and i'll drag and drop this onto the screen what is this when button one click do something okay what does this mean when button one is clicked do something now what is button one what is button one let me go to designer block let me go to designer block button one is generate button button one is generate button so whatever name is here in the designer block button one will be displayed in blocks section okay button one and label one but uh, sometimes it will get confusing so let me go to designer and change this name button one okay i'll click on button one and click on rename and i'll say generate okay i'll say generate so okay now i've changed the name to generate now when i go to blocks here it will be generate button instead of button one okay button one so generate so here also you can see it has updated so when generate button is clicked do something okay that is what this means what must we do we must generate random numbers correct we must generate random numbers and we must display the random number on the screen right where must we display in the label one section okay so when generate is clicked then i'll go to label section and here i have to search for set label one text to okay set label one text to i'll drag and drop it here i'll drag and drop it here so you can see an x mark here okay x mark that means it is incomplete right now and when you move this like this you can see the indentation matches with this that means we can fix this to this okay so this is how block programming works so this is a block this is a block block and they fit into each other like pieces of puzzle okay now i'll move this and i will leave it here a clicking sound will be heard all right so when generate option is clicked sorry when generate button is clicked set the text of label 1 to that is what this means okay in english sentence that is what this means when generate button is clicked set the text of label 1 to what do we want the text of label 1 to be a random number right so that option to generate a random number is available in math section okay math so i'll click on math and here i can see random integer from 1 to 100 okay i'll drag this and drop it here so here also you can see there is uh, something to attach it to okay there is something to attach it to so you, by looking at these two you can come to know it can get attached to this like this all right so i'll drag and drop it here so now you can see it is complete now random integer from 1 to 100 so i want the app to generate random numbers between 1 to 100 but if you want to change the range you can enter the range here so if you want from 1 to 500 you can enter 500 here and it will be done okay now let me read out this when generate button is clicked set the text of 
label 1 to a random number between 1 and 500. That is what this means. Okay. So, this will generate a random number and it will be sent to this label. Okay. And when we click on generate button, that label will be displayed to us. Alright. So, this is it. This is it. Now, our app is fully functional. Let us run the app right now. Okay. Let us run the app right now. So, there are three ways to check the working of this software and all three are available in this connect menu. Okay. So, one is by using a I companion app, other is by using an emulator, third is by USB. Okay. Now, the first one is the easiest one that is by using MIT companion app on your mobile. So, I will I have listed out the steps to install the app on your phone. So, first you have to go to play store on your mobile and search AI companion. Okay, search AI companion and you will see a result something like this. Alright, MIT AI2 companion app. Okay, you have to install it and you have to open it. Install this app and you have to open the app. And when you open, this is what you will look at. Okay, this is the screen that will be presented to you. What you have to do is, you have to click on scan QR code. Scan QR code. And then, come to this, go to connect and click on AI companion. It will generate a QR code. Scan this QR code using your mobile and you can see this app on your screen. Okay. Now, this is the easiest method. Next one is to use an emulator, which is this. Okay. This is by connecting the mobile to USB, but we no, will not talk about it. Next one, uh, the second one is using an emulator. For this, you have to go to google.com and search MIT AI starter app. Okay. And hit enter. So, go to this result. Okay, go to this result by appinventor.mit.edu. All these are ads. Okay, so go to this, install and running the emulator in AI2 and click on instruction for Windows if you are on Windows, instruction for Mac if you are using Mac. I will go for instruction for Windows and then click on download the installer which will take you to one more page. Click on download button and this program gets downloaded to your PC. Okay. Install the software and when you install the software, you will have an icon like this called AI starter on the desktop. So, right click on this and select <clears throat> install the software and when you install the software, you will have an icon on the desktop by the name AI starter. Open it which will open the screen and if this screen gets opened, leave it as it is. Go to the MIT app inventor. Okay. Go to connect and click on emulator. Okay. It will take around 1 to 2 minutes to connect to the emulator. So, you have to be patient and wait for 2 minutes. Alright. So, it has loaded the screen, but it will take around 1 to 2 minutes to get us this screen which we are looking at. Okay. Alright. So, it has loaded the screen and you can see whatever I have here is being displayed here. Now, I have a button called as generate and when I click on generate, I get random numbers between 1 and 1000 because that is what we set. Correct? So, generate. So, your first app is working and congrats, you have come till here. Okay. Now, I am going to go back quickly and make some changes to this. Alright. So, here instead of generate, if I want something else, let me click on high. Okay. High. And I want high on this. 
I can do like this. Okay, hi. And when I click on hi, I want the software to say hello there. For that, I have to go to blocks. And here, instead of random integer from 1 to 500, 1 to 500, not 1 to 1000, 1 to 500. I'll delete this. I'll right click on it and click on delete three box. Delete. Okay. I want it to say hello there. For that, I have to go to text. And I have to drag this, okay, first one, and drop it here. And inside, whatever I want to be displayed, I have to type here. I will say, hello there, okay, hello there. So now I will go to designer block. I want to check whether it is working properly. So if I look at it, I have the screen updated. So when I click on hi, it says, hello there okay when i click on hi it says hello there that is what it does only one function it does not generate any random text it just says hello there when i click on hi all right so that is how you modify the components too okay so that's it that is your first app i'll see you in the next section where we will create the next app all right okay so the next app, next simple app we'll be creating is to generate random colors. Okay. So this is the screen. I have nothing on the screen except for a button. I have only button, one button here called as change. And when I click on change, the background color of the screen will change. Change to what? Change to a random color. So Whenever you click on change, whenever you click on change, the background color changes to a random color. Alright. So this is what we will be doing next. Alright. So I am on the same page where I had left off after completing the first app. Okay. Now I want to make a new app. Uh, uh, an app which generates a random color. Right. So here you can see this is my app name, okay, name of my app, a random number generator. Even though I changed uh, its functionality to say hello there, the app name is random number generator. Now we can see our projects by going to projects and clicking on my projects, okay. So you can see that we have one entry here. So this is our app. So to go into the app, you have to just click on it, okay? But I do not want to do that. I want to create a new app. For that, go to projects and click on start new project. Or you can also click here, start new project. Both does the same thing, okay? So project and start new project. So give a name here, okay? Random, I'll give space, color, and I'll give space generator, okay? But here you can see project names cannot contain spaces. So it will take random underscore color underscore generator, okay? So we cannot have white spaces here. So it will take underscore instead. So now click on OK to get a new screen, okay? To get a new screen. And here in the screen, you only have a button, right? You only have a button. So let me drag the button here, let me drag the button and the button is at the bottom, right? The button is at the bottom. To do that, I'll click on screen, align horizontal center, align vertical bottom. So it goes to the bottom. Now, instead of text for button, I want it to be change, change. Okay, so I've changed it here. And I want the font size to be, let us say, 25, 25, all right. Now, this is done. When I click on change, the background color should change randomly, correct, to a random color. To do that, I have to go to blocks, okay. Now, here I have screen 1 and button 1. 
so i do not want it to be button one let me go back to designer and instead of button one let me rename it to change okay change so now when i go to blocks i can see it has become change now i'll click on change and i'll say when change button is clicked when change button is clicked do something that is what this means so what do i want to do i want to change the background color of the screen for that i have to go to screen 1 so here search for search for set background color okay set screen 1 background color 2 so i'll drag it and drop it here and i will put it in this location okay so when change button is clicked set the background color of screen 1 2 that is what this means i want to set it to a random color correct so i do not want any fixed color i want to generate random colors now for selecting colors we have color option colors option if you want to uh, select uh, if you want to set a fixed color, then you can just drag this and uh, set it here. But I do not want a fixed color. I want a random color. For that, I will take this. Okay. Make color. So, make color. I will take make color. And for this make color, make a list is attached. Alright. And now, let me explain about RGB before I tell you about this. All the colors that you see, all the colors that you see are made from three colors, red, green and blue. Alright. Varying red values, varying green values, varying blue values will get you different colors. For example, 0, 200, 153 will get you a different color. 100 here, 243 here and 138 here will get you a different color and so on okay the range is from 0 to 255 0 to 255 and 0 to 255 varying amount of all these will get you different colors r g and b we call it as r g and b and that is what these three are the first one is the value for r second is for value of g green third is value of b blue all right now if i fix this here if i fix this here then it will get me a color which corresponds to 255 red zero green and zero blue which is fixed which is not what i want correct so what do i want i want it to be random i want it to be random so to do that let me delete this i'll drag this out and drop it in the dustbin okay i want it to be random so once again use random number generator random integer from 1 to 100 not 1 to 100 from 0 to 255 from 0 to 255 I will right click on this and duplicate click on duplicate to generate one more i will right click on this and click on duplicate to duplicate one more or to copy this i can say to copy this now i will attach this here this is for r value next i will attach this for this this is g value finally i will attach this to b the blue value okay now what does this mean when i click on change button set the background color of screen to a color made by a list of random values of r g and b r g and b that is what this means all right so our app is done let us go back to designer and see this let me go to the emulator here emulator here i have the emulator ready so when i click on change it changes to a color random color generated by rgb values once again when i click on change green dark green light green 
some yeah violet or purple uh, green dark green uh, dark pink i can say i may be wrong all right so it changes color right so when i click on it it randomly changes color all right so our second app is also done our second app is also done you can go ahead and you can practice all right so that's it that is our second app now that is our second app if you want to build this app if you want to use this on a mobile for real then you can use build menu and create an android app okay so you know that android apps are of apk extension correct so you can make an apk file of this and install it on your mobile and you can work on it of course it is very simple but it is a start correct so you can use build and android app android app bundle is something else which is not required for you right now okay now so here we have publish to gallery option okay now this is an option to publish your application to mit inventor gallery now gallery is a place where people from around the world publish their app into okay so if you want other people to look at your app you can click on publish to gallery and it will be available in mit inventor app gallery more about this later all right so that's it for this uh, app you can go ahead and practice and i'll see you in the next section okay so the next app that we will be creating is text to speech so this is our screen and we have two components here one is a text box box and one is a button which says say it on it now here in the text box you are supposed to write whatever you want the software to tell out loud and this button is of blue color with yellow text on it when you click on say it hi the software speaks this out loud okay it reads this out loud so hi and if you can if you want you can change it let me say hi there and i've changed the text and when i click on it hi there it converts this text to speech and tells it out loud okay so this is the next software that we'll be creating now okay so i'm on the previous screen of a random color generator i want to create a new app so i'll go to projects and go to my projects i can click on start new app there itself but i'll go to projects and select start new project i'll say text to speech okay it adds underscore uh, by default i'll click on okay to get a new screen all right so what do i need i need a text box where i can enter the text which i want to convert to speech so text box is available here i'll drag it and drop it here and then below that i want a button all right so button is available here button is available here and you know that both are at the center of the screen so i'll select screen and center and center okay center and center now this text for button let me customize it so i do not want text for button one on this button i want uh, to say say it okay i want to say say it and i want the font size to be 25 25 and as you may have seen the background color of this button background color was blue so i can change it here background color default and blue okay and the text color say it color was yellow so text color is available down below yellow okay 
so we have customized it now here i'll rename this to say it so that it is reflected in the blocks uh, section text box i do not want hint for text box i'll show you what this means later let it be here right now hint let it be here so text should be entered by us i want the font size to be 25 once again 25 all right so we have customized it so next what i want to do is i have to go to media and then i have text to speech component here text to speech drag it and drop it on the screen okay so we want to convert text to speech correct so text to speech is available here drag it and drop it on the screen it will be visible for you in the component section but not on the screen all right so there are some components which are visible components like this button text box labels etc but then there are some which are non visible components that means you cannot see those or these components on the screen but they will be working behind the scenes i can say okay so text to speech is one such uh, one such component so here text to speech these things are supposed to matter but i find no difference in selecting country and raising the pitch okay you can select the country and pitch but i find no difference difference you can check it out okay now we have the components that we require here let us go to blocks and write the code now first when i click on say it when i click on say it what do i want to happen i want text to speech to call a message okay when i click on say it i want text to speech component text to speech component to speak a message or to say a message all right to say a message that is what this means call text to speech or speak a message out loud that is what this block means okay but what message do i want to speak out loud i want to speak out loud loud whatever is entered in the text box correct so i'll go to text box one and here scroll down and look for text box dot text drag this out and fix to this okay now what this means is when i click on say it button speak the message which is in text box 1 that is what this means text box 1 dot text means text in the text box 1 all right in simple words it is text in the text box 1 so when i click on the button this text which i have entered will be spoken out loud okay so our app is ready our app is ready let us connect to the emulator okay it will take few uh, uh, one to two minutes to connect all right the app has loaded now see you can see hint for text box one that comes by default because we have not changed it now when i click here i can type the message but if i do not want this hint for text box one i can go to text box one and remove this hint for text box one okay i do not want this this looks ugly so let me go back to companion see if it has refreshed yeah now it has refreshed now i'll say hello i can use my keyboard and click on say it hello it says it out loud okay i can say hello world and click on say it and hello world the program tells this out loud okay now this is the software this is the software and we have programmed it properly okay so that's it for this app now it is your turn to go ahead and practice it all right
So the next app that we will be creating is a simple calculator like this. It has provision to enter two numbers and it can perform four operations that is to add these two numbers, subtract these two numbers, multiply these two and divide the numbers. Okay. The result of the operations will be displayed here. Okay. And when we press reset button, Everything will be reset to the default values, which is what you are seeing here. Okay. So let me give you the demo of the app. So I'm going to click on number one and I will enter 57 and I'll click here and I will enter 47. Okay. I'll click on done. Now when I click on plus. 47 plus 57 will be done and the result will be displayed here. Okay. When I click minus 57 minus 47 will be done and the result will be displayed here. When I click on multiply, these two numbers will be multiplied and result will be shown here. And when I click on divide, this number one will be divided by number two and the result will be displayed here. Okay. And when I click on reset button, all the values will be reset to the initial values, which is zero. Okay. So this is the working of the app. Okay. So let us go to MIT app inventor and learn how to make this. All right. So here I'm going to click on start a new project and name the project as calculator click on ok to get this screen okay now i have a screenshot of screenshot of the app that i want to do so here if you see we have a number one and then a box to enter the number number two and a box to enter the number then the operations that we want to perform and then reset button so here if you look at this this is of two rows and two columns correct now this can be achieved by using a layout option. Okay. In layout, we have horizontal layout, uh, vertical layout and table arrangement. This scrolling we are not using here. So here, if you see the icon of this icon of this, we have two rows and two columns here. So this is what I want to do. So drag this and drop it here. Okay. Drag it and drop it here. So here I want it to be of two rows and two columns. You can change it if you want. So I want two rows and two columns. Okay. And inside the table arrangement, I want how many buttons? One, two, three, and four buttons. I want four buttons inside them. I'll drag four buttons and drop inside this. Okay. Inside this layout, not outside this, not above this, not right of it inside this. So button one, once again, I'll drag and drop button two and the third button and the fourth button okay so by now you know how to rename the buttons i want this to be plus this to be minus this into and this as divide so i'll click on button one and i'll say plus here okay plus and i'll change the font size to 25 button two i'll rename it as minus okay and I'll change the font size to 25. This is uh, actually we use star for multiplication in uh, computer uh, applications. But here let me type X okay, for multiplication and the font size to be 25. The fourth button is divide and let it be this symbol. Okay. So and 25. So we have created this. We have created this using table arrangement okay using table arrangement and then i want a reset button which is outside of this table arrangement so for this i will drag and drop button outside the table arrangement okay i want to display reset on it so i'll click on this and i'll say reset reset and i'll change the font size to 25 okay Next, what do I want to do? 
I want to have this. I want number one and then a box to enter value number two and the box to enter the value. So here if you see this is horizontal arrangement. I want one component here and next component right of it. I want one component here and the next component right of it. So I will use layout and horizontal arrangement. So you can see here we have, uh, uh, the elements are placed one next to other. So I will drag horizontal arrangement and I will drop it above the plus minus into and divide sign. So this is done. So I will drop two buttons here. I will drop one, sorry not buttons, we do not want buttons, I am sorry for this. What do we want? We want a label which says number one and a text box to enter the values. So I will drag and drop label inside this okay label which says number one okay number one and let the font size be 25 25 and next to this number one next to this number one i want a text box i want a text box correct so i'll drag and drop the text box in the horizontal arrangement section and next to number one so i'll drop it like this so i have this and I do not want any hints here. Let the font size which I enter be 25. Okay, 25. And this is fine now. Okay, this is fine. We'll talk about few more features later. Next, once again, I'll drag and drop horizontal arrangement below this. Below this. And I want a label in this too, which says number 2. Number and I'll change the font size to 25. Okay. And then I want one more text box here next of number 2. And the font that we'll be entering in this will be or should be 25. Okay. 25. So we have created this. It is fine. Now, if you look at this, everything is at the center of the screen. So I want all of this to be at the center. So I'll go to screen 1. I will select center, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, center and the user interface of the app is ready. Okay, So this is what we want and this is what we have. Now let us go to blocks section and define the functionality of this app. Now I will go to blocks section and I will write the codes to perform the various operations. So what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to enter a number here, a number here, and when we click on plus, the number must be added. The number must be added, and we must get a result, right? So now we are in block section. We are in block section. Let me go here. Let me go here and click on button one. Button one. So what is button one? Button one is to add correct to add so as there are only four numbers four buttons here we know what it does but when the number of buttons become uh, uh, larger then we won't know what button does what so it is better to rename the buttons according to their function so that is what i'm going to do i went to designer so i click on button i'll click on rename and i'll say add okay button one is to add Button 2 is to subtract, subtract and then button 3 is to multiply, I will say MUL and button 4 is for divide, I will say divide and then button 5 is to reset. So, I will say reset, okay, I will say reset. Now, when I go to block section, block section, so it is easy for me to code right now. So, add, so when add is clicked. So, when add button is clicked, what do I want to do? I want to add the numbers which are in this box and this box. Okay. So, for that I have, for that I have math operation. Okay. So, here I have plus. I am going to drag it and I am going to drop it here. Okay. I am going to drag and drop. So, this adds uh, two numbers or so that is between this and this. So here and here we must add something. 
So what is that we should add? We must add the numbers that are in this and this. Correct? For that, for that we have to go to text box 1. So, so what is text box 1? Text box 1 is this. Correct? So text box 1. So here we have, uh, let me scroll down, we have text box 1 dot text. Okay? I am going to drag and drop it here. So what this means is text in text box 1. That is what this means. Okay? Text in text box 1. So I am going to add it here. Okay? And then, and then I need to go to text box 2. Text box 2. And drag text box 2 dot text. Okay? What does this mean? Text in text box 2. So I will drag it and drop it here. Now, what does this mean entirely? This means add text in text box 1 and text in text box 2. Okay, Th that is what this means. Okay, we want to add this and this, correct? Yes. Next, after adding, we must display the result. But where do we display the result? We have to display the result here, correct? Here. But have we set anything for it? No, we have not added anything, correct? So let us go to designer block and add the result label. So we'll add a label below this. Okay, below this. And I will call this as result. So here I do not want it to display any text. So I'm going to remove this and let the font size be 50. Okay, 50. And label 3, let it be result. Okay. I'm going to rename it as result. So result. I'm going to go to blocks. Okay. So now result. So when I click on add button, add button, result. Set result text to. Set result text to. Set result text to. To what? The result of this and this. So we have to add this here. Okay. Now this is our first block for adding two numbers. So let us let us try to analyze this in plain English. When I click on add button, when I click on add button, add the text in text box 1 and the text in text box 2 and then display it in result label. So set result text to the result of this. So that is what this means. Okay. Now, we have to repeat the same thing for multiply, subtract and divide. Instead of going to sub and dragging this and adding all these things again, I am going to right click on this, click on duplicate. So now when I click on duplicate, you can see when add click, when add click. And you can see two X marks, that means it is duplicate. Okay, this is duplicate event handler. So now adding is done. I will change it to subtract right here. Okay. I will click and I will select sub. When add is clicked, do this. When subtract is clicked, do this. What do I want to do? I want to subtract 1 and 2. For this, we have to go for math section. Math. And we have subtract. Subtract. Okay. So, I will drag this and drop it here. I will drag this and I will drop it here. And we do not want this. We do not want this. So, we will delete this and add this here. Okay. So, when subtract is clicked, do this. Do what? 1 minus 2. Number 1 minus 2. And give out that result in result label. Okay. That is what this means. So, second operation is done. I will duplicate this. I will duplicate this. So, next operation is multiplication. I will remove this. I will remove this. I will go to math and here I have a block for multiplication. Okay. What should I multiply? Text in text box 1 and text in text box 2. I have to multiply these two. I do not want the subtract block because I have already completed it. So, I will delete this and add this to this. Okay. So, multiplication is done. I want to divide next. I am going to select duplicate. I am going to bring it down 
and here I'll select div divide. I'll separate this. Go to math section. I have divide block here. What do I want to do? I want to divide number one text in num text box one by text in text box two, and then delete this. Okay, delete and add it here. Okay, so all the four uh, blocks are ready. So last is reset. Reset. So when reset is clicked, when reset button is clicked, what do I want to do? I want this to be uh, zero, not zero. It's nothing should be there here. Nothing should be there here, and the result should also not be displayed. Okay. So I want everything to be blank. When when I click reset button. So when reset is clicked, so text box one. Set text box text two. Where is it? Set text box text two. Yeah, here. Okay. Set the text box text two. Text box one text two. Something. That is what we will be defining later. Uh, we'll define it later. So I'll right click on this. I'll duplicate. So we can add this and select text box two right here. Okay. Instead of going to text box two and dragging this. Dragging this, uh, where is it? This dragging this. I can just duplicate this, and I can select text box two here. You can do that too. Okay. And next, result. Result must must also be set or reset. Correct. So I'll set set result text two. Set result text two. So we want all these three to be blank. Correct. Now this blank can be given by going to text and using this okay now this is blank so i'll add this here and i'll duplicate this i'll add this here i'll duplicate this and i'll add this here okay so now everything is done so when reset is clicked set the text in text box 1 to blank text in text box 2 to blank text in result to blank that is what this means okay so now everything is done let me connect to the emulator and show you how it works all right okay so the calculator has loaded and you can see hint for text box 2 is still here i do not want it so let me go to text box 2 and let me delete the hint here okay it gets refreshed automatically yes now it is proper now let me click here and in the emulator this gets loaded up the keyboard i'll enter 59 and in number 2 i'll enter uh, 42 okay 42 i'll click on done and now when i click on plus i'll get the sum of these two here okay this is the label of result when i click on minus i get the difference into and divide and when i click on reset everything will be reset to blank <coughs> okay now it is fine but let us uh, modify this a bit okay let us fine tune this so here if you click you can see that i can enter text or characters or letters right here also when i click i am able to enter the letters which must not happen right so we must be able to enter only numbers here because we are using a calculator so let me click on reset and to make sure that only numbers can be entered here i'll go to text box one and i'll scroll down here and you can see there is a there is an option called as numbers only i'll click on this and i'll go to text box two which is this and i'll set it to numbers only now this makes sure that we can enter only numbers in one and two text boxes okay so now I'll, now i'll go back when i click on it you can see the uh, keyboard containing letters is not being displayed so i can enter numbers but i cannot enter any letters same goes here letters okay so you can see 
I can enter here also you can see I can enter minus because minus counts as number minus 33 minus 44 so you can see here but I cannot en enter any other characters okay yes so done and you can calculate the result of this all right so that's it that is our calculator now it is your turn to go ahead and practice this all right I'll see you in the next section. The next app that we will be creating is the paint app. Okay, paint app. So this is the canvas on which we will be drawing. There are three colors to choose from and there is a clear button. And below here there is a slider. Okay, there is a slider. So I'll click on red and I'll draw something like this okay the slider is to change the thickness of the line okay so i'll move it here and you can see yeah let me move it here and you can see the difference correct Yes. So even though there is no difference between this and this, there is slight difference which we cannot make out. But according to the uh, position of the slider, the thickness of the line varies. Alright. So let me select green. So you can see this and let me move it here. And you can see this and let me move it way back here. And you can see this. Alright. Same goes for blue. right so if i want to clear this canvas all i have to do is click on clear button and it will be reset okay so let's go to the mit inventor page and write codes to make this app all right so i'm going to click on create new project and name it as paint and in the next screen I will be arranging the elements like this okay so now if you see here in a horizontal arrangement I have one two three and four four buttons so what I will do is I'll go to layout and I'll drag horizontal arrangement and drop it here okay and then I will drag and drop four buttons to this button three and button four comes out of this if i drag and drop it so let me put it later so button one what is button one button one is red second is green third is blue so here i'm going to change the background color to red button two to green button three to blue okay and i'm going to remove this text i do not want any text on the buttons so i'll delete delete this i'll delete this too i'll delete this too okay so i have three buttons and three buttons along with that i have clear button so now i can drag and drop a button in this horizontal arrangement okay so this is clear so i'll name it as clear i'll name it as clear and here you can see uh, let me zoom in let me zoom in here you can see it is not uh, perfectly rectangular it has a rounded edges rounded corners i can say which you can make here okay which you can make in shape so i'll change it to rounded okay so you can see it has changed now the horizontal arrangement horizontal arrangement is in the screen and i want this to be at the center so i'll select this and click on center so it comes to the center next i want this area this canvas on which i can draw correct on which i can draw that is available in drawing and animation and 
canvas okay so drag and drop canvas here now you can see it has come uh, as a small rectangle but i want it to fill up this space fill up this space so we'll do that later below here you have a slider correct below you have a slider so let me go to user interface and drag and drop slider below this canvas okay so canvas now this is fine this is also fine now let me go back to canvas let me go back to canvas and let me increase its size to this so click on canvas and height fill parent fill parent in the sense it will fill up the uh, screen okay fill up the screen so it has filled up the screen and width to fill parent width to fill parent so it fills up the screen okay so the canvas is done canvas is done next remaining is slider which is from here to here all right so the slider should be from here to here you saw in the video that i will be moving the slider from here uh, till here all right so i'll click on slider and i'll say minimum value minimum value zero and maximum value 100 okay so zero to 100 and the initial position is zero initial position is zero thumb position is zero all right so that's it that is the uh, interface that we have created so everything is according to our requirement now let us go to the blocks let us go to the blocks section and write the codes to perform various functions all right i'll go to the blocks section i'll go to the block section and here you can see i have not uh, changed the names of the button and so it is showing me button 1 2 3 and 4 let me go back quickly and change the button names button 1 is uh, what is it red uh, red and this is green uh, this is blue and this is clear okay clear okay so let me go back now when a red button is clicked when red button is clicked what do i want to do i want to set the color of the pen to red color correct so that will be available in canvas all right so come down come down and below you will get an option called as yeah set canvas one paint color two okay set canvas one paint color two i'll drag it and drop it here and what do i want to want it to set to red color correct so colors and red so bring it and fix it here so when red button is clicked set the paint color to red okay that is what this means let me duplicate this right click and duplicate when i click on green button it should change to green so you can either delete this and bring green color or you can just click on this and select green color okay that is also fine let me duplicate this and finally when i click on blue color i want the paint color to set to blue this blue okay this blue so when red clicked set to red when green clicked set to green when blue clicked set to blue all right next when you click on clear button when clear button is clicked what must happen whatever we have drawn on the canvas must be cleared so in canvas you have an call canvas one clear block okay so use this block and drop it here so this means when click button sorry when clear button is clicked clear canvas one that is what this means call means uh, do that okay call canvas one clear this is what you have to use so we have written we have written uh, blocks or codes for these four buttons these these four buttons all right now let us write the pro, uh, program or code to draw the lines 
to draw the lines so let me go to blocks let me go to blocks and here in canvas okay when canvas one dragged all right so this is uh, let me drop it here it is a very lengthy uh, block so when canvas one dragged so this is what you have to use for drawing drawing lines on the canvas okay when canvas one dragged what should happen so in canvas once again you have you have draw line okay draw line block call canvas on draw line so we want to draw lines correct so draw line all right so when canvas one dragged call draw line now if you see uh, see my mouse pointer here if i want to drag or draw a line from here to here here to here okay this has some particular x and y value this has particular x and y value so when i draw a line from here to here it is from previous x y to current x y correct so here it is initial position here it is final position so from previ previous x y to current x y we have to draw a line so you take get previous x y what you have to do is you have to move your mouse on this okay pre r e v previous x you don't have to click it you just have to move mouse over it which gets you two option and get this okay get this what this means is get the previous x position get the previous x position and i'll move the mouse over here get the previous y position so what i'm saying is draw a line from x1 y1 from x1 y1 from previous x and y till new x and y what is new x and new y current x so get current x coordinate get current y coordinate and draw a line that is what this means okay so when canvas is dragged that means when i click and drag or when i use uh, my finger to uh, draw a line so from previous x and y till current x and y draw a line that is what this means get means get the x and y coordinates get the x and y coordinates okay so now we have written code for drawing a line on the canvas now the remaining thing is about the slider okay about the slider according to the position of this on the slider or according to the position of the slider the thickness of the line which we used to draw must change correct so that is what we will write the codes to next okay so i'll go to slider okay i'll go to slider and i'll drag this when slider position changed or when we change the slider on position that is what this means okay now generally how do we change the slider using thumb right thumb so thumb position so get thumb position is for getting the position of the thumb okay current position of the thumb where is it is it towards the left or towards the right or at the center or somewhere in between so this gets the current thumb position okay now we will leave it as it is so this means when the position of thumb on slider is changed or when slider position is changed okay now what do we want to do when slider position is changed we want to change the thickness of the line we want to change the thickness of the line but uh, let me go to this how much should it be when the slider position is here or how, wh what must be the thickness of the line when the slide is slider is here what must be the thickness of the line when the slider is here what must be the thickness of the line when the slider is here what must be the thickness of the line when the slider is here okay that is the question so according to different positions of this slider the thickness of the line varies 
correct so for that we have to use a different code or block so in control in control we have if then block we have if then block okay so i'm going to use this i'll use this and i'll explain how it works okay now if in math okay if in math i'll drag this i'll drag this okay if in math i'll move the mouse over thumb position and select get thumb position and drag this okay drag this and here i'll say less than less than and i have a space here and in math i have this i'll drag and drop this okay and i'll say 10 i'll say 10 and this is fine if this is true then do something what what must we do in canvas in canvas we have a block set line width to set line width to okay set line width to to something what is it let me go back to math and let me drag and drop this here and i'll set it to one okay so this is the block this is the block that we will be needing to change the thickness of line according to position of slider now let me explain this all right so if then if then is used when we want to check a condition and if the condition is true we want to do something okay so what we are saying is if this condition is true then do this that is what we are saying now what is the condition what is the condition get thumb position get thumb position all right so what is this this means current thumb position so let us assume that let us assume the thumb position is this okay or the slider is here slider is here so if this is less than 10 less than 10 what is this 10 now minimum value we had set 0 correct let me go back to designer and if you see minimum value we had set to 0 maximum we had set to 100 so that means 0 is here 100 is here from here to here we have 100 spaces so if we want to change the width of the length 10 times okay or in 10 steps then we divide this entire length into 10 parts now what i am saying here is if the thumb position is less than 10 that means if the entire thing is 100 then the 10 comes around here okay if the slider position is here or here or here or here or here less than 10 less than 10 means 1 2 3 4 5 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 less than 10 okay if the thumb position is less than 10 then set the line width to 1 okay set the line width to 1 that means if the slider is here to here then the line width will be 1 okay now it may be confusing to you it may sound confusing i'll give a demo of the software and come back to this and explain once again so it will make sense to you later all right now i'll drag this and drop it here now this is fine this is fine but this is not complete we have written code only for less than 10 but what about less than 20 now this looks like it is less than 20 okay 20th position what about this we want to increase the thickness right we want to increase the thickness so here if you move your mouse over this blue color and click on it so we have two other blocks so i'll drag this else if and set it here okay which adds one more else if then to this i'll click on this and i'll drag this and drop it over this so which gives me one more else if then i'll drag this and once again i'll put it over here 
so I have 1 2 3 and 4 once again I'll click on this I'll put it here I'll get one more else if once again I'll do this once again I'll do this okay once again I'll do this once again I'll do this why am I doing this many times I'll explain so now if the thumb position is less than 10 do this set the line width to 1 now I'm going to copy this I'm going to copy this okay I'm going to click right click on it and duplicate so I will paste it here and here I will make it 20 and I will duplicate this and make it 2 okay so now what I'm saying is if the thumb position or slider position is less than 10 less than 10 meaning from here till here if it is less than 10 then set the line width to 1 else otherwise that means if this is not true okay first if first it checks whether this is true if it is not true it goes to this else if the thumb position is less than 20 that is from here to here okay now this satisfies according to this sketch it satisfies this condition else if the thumb position is less than 20 then set the line width to 2 okay the thickness will be increased now we want to do the same thing again and again so i'll copy this block and i will paste it again and again okay so i'm using control c and control v to do it so i'll paste it here paste it here so i'll paste it here or i'll fix it here i can say i'll fix it here and i'll fix one more i'll fix one more and i'll fix one more okay so i fixed this we need this also we need this also i'll copy this control c and i'll paste it so i'll set it here set it here set it here okay Now I will make this 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 okay and I will uh, do this 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8 9 and 10 okay so according to slider position according to slider position the line thickness will be set all right that means if if the thumb position is less than 100 10 will be the thickness of the line if it is less than 90 9 will be the thickness of the line all right so the code is ready the code is ready let us go to the emulator and check it's working okay i'll select connect and i'll select emulator and allow it for to run okay it takes around two minutes okay so now it has loaded up you can uh, look at it so we have three uh, colors three buttons and clear but here you can see the slider has come only this much only this much or uh, we need the slider from here to here okay here to here uh, we did not uh, do that in the beginning so to do that you have to click on slider okay slider and in the width you have to select fill parent okay so let me show you the difference so i'll watch here what happens so fill parent fill parent i'll click on this and the slider will come for the entire uh, width of the screen okay now that will be reflected here too so now you can see the uh, slider here now uh, what i meant was the this is 0 and this is 100 and this is 10 this is 20 this is 30 40 50 60 70 80 and 90 okay so this is divided into 100 locations i can say and according to the location of the slider according to the location of the slider the thickness of the line will change all right so i'm going to click on red and i'll do this now the uh, what is it now let me go back to blocks yeah 
let me clear this and show you once again from the beginning now i'll select red i'll select red i am going to and i'm going to draw a line now see the position of the slider is less than 10 it is at 0 right now it is to the extreme end so it is less than 10 so the width or thickness of this line is set to 1 now if i move this let us say now this may be less than 30 less than 30 so if it is less than 30 then the width will be 3 or the thickness of the line will be 3 so you can see it is thicker than this okay now if i move this if i still move this here it may be less than 50 so 5 will be set for the or as the width of the line and if i still move it it may be less than 70 so the width will be set to 7 okay so i'll click on blue and according to slider position the thickness will be set if i move till here now this may be less than 100 more than 90 so the thickness will be more okay so when i click on clear the canvas will be cleared and you are ready to paint once again all right so this is the paint app now it is your turn to go and practice this software okay practice making this software that's it that's the end of this introductory video now it is your turn to keep on learning new options and functionalities till you become an expert at it there are hundreds of videos on youtube which shows you how to make various kinds of apps using mit app inventor so go ahead and keep learning i'll see you in a different video till then take care and thank you for watching